Hello, dear friends. This is Ewell Humphreys here. I'm glad to share with you another word from the Bible, a word of the Lord. A little 10-minute message, and I pray God will bless it to your heart as it goes out all over the world. Amen. I want to speak to you on the fact that Jesus changes life. Jesus changes your life. Oh, praise the Lord. When you let Jesus into your heart and into your life, then you are not the same person. You don't think like you used to. You don't talk like you used to. You don't love the things you used to love. Oh, you don't dislike the things you used to dislike. There was a time when I was not in favor of ch church at all. But oh, now it's become my very, very dearest, dearest companion and, and uh, association. And so it's important that we see that Jesus changes your life. Over in the book of First Peter in the fourth chapter, the Bible says <clears throat> that in times past when you did run with these people under sin and idolatries and abominations, but they now think it very strange that you do not run with them anymore, but that you have changed. But what they do not know is that they're going to have to give account to him that judges the living and the dead. Amen. <clears throat> and so the Bible says that there comes a time when you accept Christ, that he changes your life. He changes your life and, and uh, he, he changes your friends. When you get right with God, well, I mean really right with him and after living in the old life of sin <clears throat> you're going to lose a lot of things you're going to lose a great part of your vocabulary <laughs> and you didn't use need it anyway and then you're going to lose a great deal of your desires your desires will change you'll be desiring things that you used to not even want to be around praise God hallelujah Jesus changes your life and then you he You'll be changed, oh, praise the Lord, not only in your desires, uh, but you'll be, you, you're, you'll be changed with the uh, friends that you run with. You're going to lose some friends when you, when you become a committed Christian. Remember this, that when you become a committed Christian, you're going to lose part of your vocabulary. You're going to lose the desires you used to have, and you're going to lose a great number of your friends, so-called friends. Because, praise God, when you walk with the Lord, you're going to learn to walk with others that love Him, and pretty soon you'll be becoming friends to those who are real friends. Praise the Lord. So it's important who you hang out with, who you spend time with. If you were to spend time with an airplane pilot, and he ate with you, and he... He uh, walked with you and talked with you every day. I tell you for sure, you'd be talking, sooner or later, you'd be talking a whole lot about airplanes. And if you, if you spent time uh, and hung out with a farmer day and day after day, it wouldn't be long, but you'd be talking about crops and, and weather and, and uh, all kinds of different situations on the farm. And if you walk with a Christian committed to the Lord and loving God and serving Jesus, it won't be long till you be talking about the things of God. And so it's important. It's important the people we run with. And we run with the people that we become accustomed to in Christ. And when you love Christ, He changes us. Over in the Bible, again in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians in the 5th chapter, it says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. So you see, when you really become a Christian, you really lose a lot of us, uh, those that you're associating with in your regular walk in life. And you'll be, you almost feel that you're alone because the world is out there and they're not in line with those dedicated, committed Christians. But it's better to walk alone in the dark with Jesus than it is to walk in the light 
with the people of this world that do not know him. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you, dear friend. God give you strength. It's better to live in a three-room house with Jesus than it is to live in a mansion without Christ. And so we have Jesus, and having him, it's important. And he has given us a special invitation to come and walk with him. The Bible says over in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 12, it says, Come unto me, I mean 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The Lord wants to give you a rest. It's a rest not only physical, but spiritual. It's a rest where you can quit trying to do this and that to, in order to please God, but just trust God and accept what Christ has done for you and love God and love your fellow man. Let your light shine that others can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. He says, Take, your, your, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And so look to the Lord. And when you look at people, don't look at those who are just standing up thinking, talking like they know it all, but rather, rather succumb to those who are lowly of heart, who are humble, who do not think they're better than other people, but they are just people that love God and love their neighbor. This is the kind of people you need to be around as much as possible. It's not always easy to find such people, but we can wait on God and let him do it. Let him lead us and guide us. He changes us. I like the story told about Stuart Hamlin. Stuart Hamlin was a, was a songwriter, and he had written many songs, and he was not a Christian. And uh, back when Billy Graham preached a revival meeting in, in uh, California, uh, uh, Stuart Hamlin's wife was a Christian. And she tried to talk him into going to, uh, to, to the revival. And uh, he said, finally, all right, I'll call, I'll try to go. So he went with her. And when they left that night after the service, he said, listen, don't you ever ask me to go again? He said, that man was preaching right to me. <laughs> he said, he, he looked over toward me and pointed at me. Of course, there were about 75,000 people out there. <laughs> but he, he was, it was a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Two nights later, he said, all right, I'll go again. And he went again. And the Lord spoke plainly to his heart and drew him, and he stepped out in that aisle, and he walked forward, and he gave his heart, his life to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He was found faithful. His life was changed. He found a church, was baptized, and began to go to church and love God. And he loved the Lord. Then he began to talk about him to others. And he was over in Hollywood one day, and he was talking to John Wayne and uh, about the Lord. And John Wayne said, um, Stuart said, uh, you, you used to write music? He said, uh, you, you, you love the Lord so much, why don't you write a song about him? And Stuart Hamlin said, he thought about that then, he began to think about it that night, and he got out his pencil and paper, and he wrote, the song, It Is No Secret What God Can Do. He stopped by, by a cafe and they had a Nickelodeon. In those days, a Nickelodeon, and they played records. And they played about three of his own records that he had produced. And they were very worldly. And so he went over to the owner and he said, I want you to take those records off, off that Nickelodeon. I'll pay you whatever it's worth. I will not have those those singing, I will not be on that, on that Nickelodeon singing again like that for people to hear. And they took him off. His life was changed. His life was changed. <clears throat> and he wrote it, uh, several songs, but one of them was, It Is No Secret What God Can Do. <clears throat> it is no secret 
what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. The chimes of times ring out the new, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell, was that someone you? Oh, in his light there is no night, for oh, in courage to be true. For understand he loves you, and he'll always see you through. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Amen. May the Lord bless you. God give you grace. Pray a brief prayer with me if you need to be sure you're right with God. Pray a prayer like this and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise God. And help me live for you. Amen and amen. Pray a prayer, something like that, and believe it, that his blood was shed for you. He rose again, and when you look to him and believe in him, you're saved forever. Praise the Lord God. And he'll bless you with blessings that you've never known. It is no secret what God can do. He'll change lives. Amen. God bless you. God keep you close to him. He loves you and I love you. Amen and amen.